Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rustic Songbird Podcast. I'm your host, Leah Walker, and today it is you and me, my friend. Today is a solo show, and we're gonna be tackling the topic of what to do after you've recorded your own songs. Today, I'm going to talk about what it takes to release your own music online as an independent musician. I'm going to talk about the next steps for you to take after you've recorded your songs, and also sharing some tips for how to plan a successful music release. I'm so excited about this topic. I love talking about it and I want to help you make your next release a success. So buckle up, get some coffee, sit back and relax. Let's get started. First things first, if you have not subscribed to this podcast, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button because there are some great episodes coming soon. I'm so excited for the new interviews coming up with people in the music industry. This podcast is just growing and growing and I'm so excited for what's happening so I don't want you to miss it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and you will be getting access to this podcast for free every single Monday. We come out with a new episode and Man, there are so many incredible guests coming up on the show. I don't want you to miss it. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you listen to this show regularly and want to support what we're doing here and you love the topics that we cover, I want to invite you to be a part of our Patreon community. This is a way for you to support the podcast every single month, and there are several tiers to choose from. You can get all the details for how to become a patron of this show by going to patreon.com slash rustic songbird. Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N, patreon.com slash rustic songbird to become a patron of this podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I'm excited to jump into today's topic, so let's go. Yes, I have been looking forward to having this conversation with you for a while now because, two reasons, because if you're listening to this episode and you're interested in this topic, you are my people. And I just love talking about the music business and helping songwriters take that next step to put their music out into the world. I'm so passionate about this topic and I talk to a lot of my friends that are making music, that are songwriting, recording, and they have questions. All right, so if you've got questions, I'm bringing you some fire, bringing you some answers today. We're gonna talk about what to do after you've recorded your songs. So you've probably written these amazing songs recorded them maybe at a studio or a home recording maybe you've recorded them yourself and then you wonder now what what do i do with these awesome songs that i've written and recorded that's what we're going to talk about here today and before i go through these different things that you can do to release your music i want to let you know that i've already made it into a free checklist for you and i want to invite you to download the free music release checklist by going to rusticsongbird.com slash checklist. This is something that you can go back to again and again. If you are releasing music for the first time, this will save you so much time. And if you're going to be releasing music again, you can use this as a checklist for your next release as well. So this is really a valuable list to have to just keep things organized and it's yours for free. So download the free music release checklist by going to rusticsongbird.com slash checklist. I made this with love for you. So go to rusticsongbird.com slash checklist to grab yours. Okay, we're gonna talk about what to do after you've recorded your songs and there are Lots of options. The great thing about being an independent musician is that when you're paving your own way, you can kind of go at your own pace. You can do it in a way that works for you. But with that array of options, it can make things seem really overwhelming, things can seem vague. And so what I wanna do is break it down to some basics for you to consider and to help you take that next step, whatever that looks like for you. So once you've recorded your songs, you probably are wondering how to copyright your songs, to make sure they're protected, to make sure that everybody knows that they're yours. And if that ever comes into question, then you have some kind of paperwork or some kind of proof, right? So to do that, I would recommend to copyright any songs that you're going to release. And the way you do that is to go to the Copyright Office website, which is copyright.gov for anyone that's in the United States, people may be listening outside the country, but for the US anyway, we go to 
gov and then you want to fill out the form sr which is for sound recording so once you've recorded your songs you've got those files you can go through their submission process with the form sr you can submit it online you can also do a mail-in and that takes a few weeks to process so it's good to do that ahead of time before you release your music you can plan ahead for this Whenever you have the recordings of your songs, it's a great idea to go ahead and get that copyright process started. That's the form that you want to use for the sound recording, and you will include any songwriter information, your publishing information, your release date, and things like that. It will walk you through the form of what you need to do to submit it, and that just makes a record of it in the copyright office. So if there is any question that that song is yours, you've got that in writing. Of course, you own it if you created it, but this just lets the whole world know that it's yours. So you do wanna copyright any songs that you're going to be releasing out into the world. Next, you are going to want to register your songs with a performing rights organization or PRO. And the top few PROs that most songwriters use are ASCAP, BMI, or CSAC. Personally, I'm a writer with ASCAP and have had a great experience with them. Some of my co-writers are with BMI or CSAC, and there are different ways to sign up. You can go to their individual websites and see how their process works and how to sign up. But what you're going to want to do as a songwriter is to register with one of those performing rights organizations as a songwriter and register with them as a publisher because if you haven't signed your publishing away then you own it so you need to be signed up as a writer signed up as a publisher and then you register your list of songs with that performing rights organization they are the ones that collect your writers royalties and your publishing royalties for that song whenever it's streamed or downloaded or played anywhere you get paid for that as the songwriter and as the publisher. So this is important for you to get paid for your music. You need to be signed up with them as a writer and publisher, and you need your songs registered with them. So once you are signed up, you can go and add your songs in, put in your songwriter details, and that keeps track of your catalog of songs. The next thing I'm going to recommend that you do is to sign up with soundexchange.com. This is a free account for you to get paid as the artist on the track if you're the one singing it performing it you are the artist and this also collects royalties these are additional royalties for being the owner of the sound recording so these are royalties that are not collected from your songwriter and publishing royalties these are additional royalties that are owed to you if you are the artist of the song or if you are the recording copyright owner. So you need to sign up for free with soundexchange.com as the artist and recording copyright owner so you can get those additional royalties. You can go ahead and make an account with them, and then once your songs are out, you just go into your account, look through their library, put in your artist name, and you claim those songs so that you'll get paid those additional royalties over time from any streams, downloads, or plays of those songs. So it's a pretty sweet deal. This is something that I did not do for the longest time and recently got this in order and I'm so excited to tell everyone to sign up for Sound Exchange if you are the artist. This is also great for people that are not the songwriter. They may not own the rights to the song, but this is their version of it as the artist. They're singing someone else's songs. And if you've paid for the recording, then you own the recording copyright. So this is a really cool thing. You need to definitely make sure that you are signed up with Sound Exchange. When it comes to releasing your music to all of the download sites and streaming sites and all the platforms for people to listen to your music, you don't have to go to iTunes and Spotify and everywhere and upload your music. This is a common myth, a common question that I get. I have had friends ask me, so do I just upload my music to iTunes? And that's not how it works. So you need to go through a digital distribution site where you upload the music once. You upload those files one time and they send it out to every streaming and download platform for you and they collect all of the monies that are owed to you from those downloads and streams. Um, So this keeps it organized in one place and there are several places that you can go to distribute your music. I have used CD Baby for a long time so you can go to cdbaby.com and go through them 
Or there's another site that does the same thing. It's called TuneCore. I have a lot of friends that have used that. There is a newer platform for digital distribution called DistroKid, which a lot of my friends, especially in Nashville, are loving using this. And anyone that is wanting to release multiple singles or a lot of music, you've got maybe singles leading up to an album release, DistroKid is a great option for multiple releases because their structure is set up differently. Normally with distribution sites, you pay per album or per song release, and it can add up if you're releasing a lot of music. But with DistroKid, they charge starting at $20 for the year for as many releases as you want to do. So if you wanted to do a 10 song album and release a song every month for 10 months leading up to your album being out, you could do that. You could release a song a month and you just pay that one-time fee for the year. So that's a really cool thing. And I actually made a video on my YouTube channel about DistroKid, just showing you what the dashboard looks like and what the process looks like when you are releasing your song. So if that's something you're interested in, you can go check that out on my YouTube channel where I do a DistroKid tutorial. And I also have a discount code if you want to try that out and it sounds like a good fit for you. You can go to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Lydia and get 7% off of their annual membership. So check that out. See if it's a good fit for you. I really like that structure. And another thing that I like about DistroKid while I'm talking about them is that you can put in any co-writers information and they get paid through that as well. The other distribution sites, as far as I know, don't do it that way. And so it's less for you to keep track of doing songwriter, co-writer splits. DistroKid pays them from that platform. So if you want to check that out, you can go to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Lydia to get 7% off and to try it out to release your music. This helps you distribute it to iTunes, Spotify, Napster, Sony, Pandora, all the places. If you can think of it, like that's where they send it. They send it everywhere. Um, It's a pretty easy process to submit your music and you can set the date for when you want it to go out. So this is something that you can do ahead of time as well. And I recommend leaving several weeks before the release so that it has time to be added to their playlist and gives it more of a push when the songs first come out. So anyway, I wanted to talk more about the distribution to make sure you understand like how that works and why it's different than like signing up with a PRO. They, they do different things. So the digital distri- uh, distribution platform is really, really helpful to keep all your songs in one place and to make sure that you get paid from all of those streams. That's a recurring theme here. I want you to get paid for your music and I really believe that musicians and artists should get paid for their work and so this is how you do it. You get organized, you get, get all your songs registered and submitted in the correct way so they know where to send the money from those streams. So that is digital distribution. The next thing I wanna talk about is getting actual physical copies printed of your CD. So if you have done a release to iTunes, if you have your music online, but you really want to get copies of your CD, I recommend using Disc Makers. That's D-I-S-C, yeah, D-I-S-C, discmakers.com, and you can get your CDs printed. If this is your first release, I would recommend doing a short run maybe a hundred copies, you know, for like friends and family, start having those at gigs or selling them through your website or whatever you want to do. But if you do a short run, you can get that cop, uh, the copies printed through disc makers for a couple dollars per CD. And then what I like to do as an independent musician is to use the money from selling the short run of CDs to then go back and print more copies of the CDs, because I don't want you to just go in and Get a thousand copies of the CD if they're just going to sit in your garage or if they're going to sit around. You know, if you're building this from scratch, it's just a smart idea to start small and then you can always reorder copies. So you can go through Disc Makers. Um, They have jewel cases. They have different things that you can put your music on. But I like to use the Eco Wallets, which are just a cardboard front and back, and then the CD slides in on the side. Um, When I am ordering CDs, I like to go through... Uh, their website because they also have a designer where you can bring in your pictures, you can add text, you can design your album artwork right there and see what it looks like. Make sure that it's all correct before you send it. I've had a great experience using Disc Makers for like a dozen 
albums that I've released for myself and I always recommend it because they're the best. So go check that out if you're wanting to get copies of your CD made to have at your shows or on your website, like I said, and they always do a great job. They have lots of pricing options. So even if you're doing this on a tight budget, there are options for you. I do recommend disc makers to get copies printed of your CDs. I know that this is a lot of information and I'm just like spilling it out like a fire hose right now because I really want you to have the information that you need to release your music and for you to have at least a few steps on the path to know this is how to get started. This is how to make it available. This is how to get it out there so people can start listening to it because then the fun part starts. Then you can promote your music. Then you have it to sell to people. Then people are listening and you'll start hearing stories back of how it's changing their life and that it made their day or that it made them smile and tap their foot or uh, one of your songs could be used in milestones of people's lives. Like I don't know what genre you're in but if you write a song that someone loves to use in graduation videos or for a wedding first dance or something like that. It's really cool to see a song that you've written connect with people, connect with your audience, and then be used over and over. And so I'm really excited to see what music you put out there and would love for you to jump in our Facebook group and share any releases that you've got going on uh, to talk with other writers. Let's celebrate together. We have a free Facebook group for the Rustic Songbird writing community. So if you're not a part of that, definitely join. We'd love to see what you're working on. Um, also, you can tag me on Instagram and share your new music. I would love to hear it and to see what you're up to. So if you tag me at the Lydia Walker, I can see that and would love to hear from you. Also, if this is a lot of information, don't worry if you're not taking notes. Maybe you're driving. Maybe you're, you know, taking a shower or listening to this while you're washing dishes. Uh, that's when I usually listen to podcasts. So if that is you, I put this all together in an easy checklist for you that you can, you can download absolutely for free. You can go to rusticsongbird.com slash checklist to get the music release checklist of all the things that I talked about here just in an easy way to keep that for either your first release or your next release. I want this to be a good resource for you so you have the information that you need to put your music out there. So grab your music release checklist by going to rusticsongbird.com slash checklist. Before we wrap up today, I want to give you a little pep talk because I know anytime you do something for the first time, there's a huge learning curve. And maybe you clicked on this episode and thought, I don't even know where to start. So this might be a lot of information, but I want to encourage you to take it a step at a time. You don't have to do all of this at once. You don't have to do it in one day. And once you've signed up with a PRO or once you've made your distribution account and gone through the process, it's going to be easier the next time because you won't be starting from scratch. You won't be going through all this for the first time. So there will be less work to do the next time and you'll be more familiar with it. So I just want to encourage you to give yourself some grace going through this process because it is a lot. And when you are an independent musician, you are wearing all the hats, you're in charge of a lot of things that go into releasing your own music. And so give yourself some slack, give yourself a pat on the back. If you are doing this as an independent musician, hats off to you. You're my people. I love being able to call the shots and write whatever songs I want and re record and produce and promote songs. I love being able to make music and still be home with my babies and raising them and it's just such a blessing. I feel like I have the best of both worlds being a mom and a musician and also I just have such a heart for helping musicians like you get to that ne next step and to release your own music and I think what holds us back a lot of times is just getting started. So I want to encourage you to look at this checklist that I made, download it, print it, use it over and over. This is my gift to you. This is a resource for you to use and I want it to help you just take that next step. So if you've been wondering about copyrights, go look into that. If you haven't signed up with a PRO yet, go check that out. Maybe you want to compare a few distribution sites, that's awesome. And maybe you've had music released online, but you just need a refresher or maybe you haven't printed actual copies yet. So that's that's the next step for you. Whatever it looks like, I want you to take that next step. And then my encouragement would be to just keep moving forward. I believe that 
every voice is important and that you have something special to say, that your story matters and your songs matter, and I want the world to hear it. So I am here for you, cheering you on, rooting you on the entire way, and I'm so excited to see what music comes from your heart, to see this music go out into the world and to bless people, encourage people, and uh, maybe just to put a smile on their face when they haven't smiled in a while. That is such a blessing. Um, I really appreciate you listening to this and I would love to hear your questions. So feel free to send me a message on Instagram at the Lydia Walker and let me know what questions you have about releasing your own music. I'm planning to have more YouTube videos on this soon and I'd love to hear your questions to know what you want to hear about. So send me a message, let me know your questions. I would love to help out. I hope today's podcast inspired you to take that next step. Make sure to download the free music release checklist by going to rusticsongbird.com slash checklist. This is my gift to you, so go get it. Download your copy today. Print it off as many times as you want. Save it on your desktop. Make sure to have it ready when you are releasing your music. I'm so excited to see what you put out into the world, and I I really appreciate you listening to this podcast. I hope that it's encouraging to you. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already because there's even more content like this coming soon to encourage you and equip you in the next step of your own music journey. So songbirds, keep writing, and I'll catch you next time on the Rustic Songbird Podcast. Thanks for listening.